Welcome dear brothers and sisters to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. We would like to share some important thoughts from the article, Benedict the Sixteenth. it is the time of Antichrist. Written by Rod Dreyer on the 10th of January, 2023. Vladimir Palko, a mathematician and retired statesman also a Slovakian a member of the underground Catholic Church who went on to serve as interior minister in one of the country's post-communist governments, had written a book called The Lions Are Coming, Why Europe and America Are Heading for a New Tyranny. This book is about the rising anti-Christian nature of Western life and politics. The book had been translated into German. Subsequently, Pope Emeritus Benedict read the book and in 2015, Vlado Palco received a letter from Benedict XVI as Pope Emeritus. Vlado was grave as he spoke of the letter. It was very short, he said, and appreciative of the book. And at the end, the Pope Emeritus spoke of the Antichrist. Vlado did not want to say precisely what Benedict had said. He told us that he would not release the letter until after Benedict died. Today Standard published a short interview with Vlado in which he revealed the contents of Benedict's letter. Here is an excerpt from the interview, which I've translated via Google into English. When you reported the letter for the first time, you decided not to publish part of the text, noting that it was not the right time to do so. The reason was the sensitive content and concerns that the late Pope expressed about the state of the Catholic Church. Could you elaborate on what exactly it was? Yes, it's like that. The letter is not long, it has 12 lines. In the second half of the letter there is a sentence, about three lines long, in which the Pope Emeritus makes some striking claims. The sentence reads as follows, We see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding, and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. What did you think then? And what do you think about it today? Concepts such as the expansion of the Antichrist's power, the church in its hour of need, and the need to defend the church from the power of evil are serious and weighty. All the more so because they were uttered by a person in whose expression throughout his life accuracy was combined with the appropriateness of the terms used. He delivered serious public messages even as Pope, but these formulations are several degrees more urgent. The situation of the world and the church troubled the Pope Emeritus very much. He was obviously suffering from it. Benedict wrote about the Antichrist in his first book about Jesus of Nazareth. It was the part where he discussed the temptation of Christ by the devil in the desert, where the devil appeared as a theologian, in Ratzinger's words. The Pope also recalled Soloviev's famous legend of the Antichrist, which is a short fictional prose where the Antichrist received a doctorate from the University of Tübingen, the funny thing is that Ratzinger himself once taught there. The Antichrist appears here as a great humanist, he fights against hunger, he is the author of the book The Open Path to Well-Being and Peace in the World, Benedict uses this only as an illustration that even interpretation of the scriptures can become a tool of the Antichrist. As a theological scholar, he criticized certain behavior of scholars and theologians. And he reminded that the Antichrist does not have to look hideous, that he does not have to be recognized as evil, but he can appear acceptable, benevolent, as a humanist who, however, goes against God. What is the figure of the Antichrist for you? I note with a smile that politicians, even former ones, do not usually use this term. But when you insist, it could be someone with extraordinary influence who pretends to be more merciful than Christ. You decided not to publish the letter and wait. Even now, after the death of Benedict, you waited more days, why such caution? 
It is just ordinary human caution and hesitancy. At that time, seven years ago, I wondered why he would write such unusual words to a person he did not even know. Now the question has returned. With the death of Benedict XVI, something is coming to an end and I myself want to conclude some things. What did you take from that letter then, seven years ago? In that year 2015, I thought that I would certainly not be wrong if I take to heart the words of the Pope Emeritus about the need for prayer. Since then, I regularly prayed for the church on my way to work. Before praying, I always said in my mind that it is for the Pope, for the Pope Emeritus, and for all the pastors of the church. After Benedict XVI resigned, it caused great astonishment and criticism. However, the former Pope did not remain completely silent, he published several texts and books, and sometimes statements from private conversations or letters, such as yours, were published. Benedict, in short, from seclusion, but still communicated with the world. Since you were part of it, and at the same time you didn't talk about it, but you thought a lot about it, what do you think today, why did the Pope step down, which he felt was more urgent than serving in the chair of Peter? And what did he try to convey to the believers from seclusion? Perhaps he honestly no longer believed that he was capable of solving problems and humbly chose to leave. Perhaps he felt other pressures, which we will probably never know. But in any case, it strikes me as the decision of a responsible and humble person. And what did he try to convey to the faithful from his retreat? Well, what he wrote in the letter. That the situation is serious and we must pray to the only Lord of history. Since you are talking about the end of an epoch, what are the characteristics of the new epoch? How is it different? I will only say what everyone sees anyway. That the epic begins with enormous tension in the political and spiritual spheres. Therefore, there is considerable uncertainty. In connection with Benedict's legacy for Christians, but not only for them, four principles come to mind as we enter this epic. The first is that there are things you can never back down on, and trying to avoid fighting for them is a grave mistake. In Slovak politics, I witnessed this very mistake of many Christians. The second is that one must examine one's motives and humbly start from oneself, not immediately think of one's neighbor as the culprit. And the third? Benedict XVI he emphasized so many times that faith and reason complement each other. You also have to stick to your mind. And finally, that you need to pray for strong shepherds who can defend the church from the power of evil. Once again, the words of Benedict XVI in 2015, as one sees the power of Antichrist spreading, one can only pray that the Lord will give us mighty shepherds to defend his church against the power of evil in this hour of need. It is quite astonishing that a holy pope read the signs of the times and saw the coming of Antichrist. His resignation looks different in this light. Perhaps he believed that, in his sickness and frailty, he could not lead the church through the coming apocalypse. But this is not the first time Benedict spoke of ours as being the time of the Antichrist. Let us conclude with an extract from Seawald's authoritative biography of Benedict. He quotes Pope Ratzinger saying, The true threat for the church, and thus for the Petrine service, does not come from this sort of episode, it comes instead from the universal dictatorship of apparently humanistic ideologies. Anyone who contradicts this dictatorship is excluded from the basic consensus of society. One hundred years ago, anyone would have thought it absurd to speak of homosexual matrimony. Today those who oppose it are socially excommunicated. The same holds true for abortion and the production of human beings in the laboratory. 
Modern society intends to formulate an anti-Christian creed, whoever contests it is punished with social excommunication. Being afraid of the spiritual power of the Antichrist is all too natural, and what is truly needed is that the prayers of entire dioceses and of the world church come to the rescue to resist it. Thank you again for joining us. May God bless you and keep you. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Amen.